What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. Join Ninja Nation. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Zach Eflin, who had seven strikeouts and seven innings, giving up two runs. He had this absolutely beautiful front door two-seamer, as well as this curveball for a sword and this slider. He was up against Zach Davies, who had three Ks and seven scoreless innings, thanks to this painted fastball, as well as this nasty changeup. Kyle Gibson had five Ks and four and two-thirds innings, thanks to his sweeper, his painted two-seamer, as well as this changeup. And he faced Luke Weaver, who had two Ks in four and a third innings, but gave up four runs and had this cutter. Logan Allen had five strikeouts in three and two-thirds innings, giving up no runs, and relied on his mix of fastballs, changeups, and cutters. Kyle Freeland had seven strikeouts in five innings. He did give up six earned runs, but had this painted fastball, as well as a mix of nasty sliders and knuckle curves. And he faced Michael Grove, who had three Ks in five innings, giving up four runs, and had this slider. Colby Allard was really good, with eight strikeouts and four and two-thirds scoreless innings, giving up only three hits. He relied a lot on his elevated fastballs and got a bunch of swords on him. And I also like his spinning K struts. He also had a couple of filthy change-ups as well as pretty curveballs. A few people on Twitter were asking me, why is everybody swinging at Colby Allard's fastball way up there? Well, here's a great example. Here's a curveball that got a foul nuke off of it. And as a hitter, you're thinking you really got him. So next time you see a pitch in that tunnel, you're ready to swing. And if you get that fastball, you're hosed. Because you end up swinging at a fastball way up out of the zone. That's what pitch tunneling does. Allard outdueled Kenta Maeda, who had four strikeouts in five innings, giving up two runs, and had this fastball, splitter, and slider. Trevor Richards had five Ks in three innings, giving up no runs, and had this fastball as well as this wicked change-ups and got a sword on it. You can see why Richards has a 47% whiff rate on his change-up this season. That thing is filthy. He battled Logan Webb, who had five Ks in five innings, but gave up five runs, and had these nasty sinkers, sliders, and change-ups. But the filthiest pitch this game was from Sadie Gosman. Sadie had this absolutely wicked splitter on her first pitch. And her dad, Kevin, was understandably very proud. Gosman's just a great dad overall. He even brought his other daughter, Sutton, to make an appearance during my interview with him. Just a great dude. Miles Michaelis had four Ks in five and two-thirds innings, giving up five runs, but had these hammer curveballs. Kodai Senga had eight strikeouts in five innings, giving up five hits. And had a really solid outing with these fastballs, these cutters, as well, of course, his ghost forks. Look how filthy these things are. And here's an overlay of Kodai Senga's ghost fork with a fastball. And you can see how that ghost fork comes in looking like a high fastball and then absolutely disappears. Hitters are slugging only 145 against his ghost fork with a 58% whiff rate. Senga faced Wade Miley, who had three Ks in four innings, giving up two earned runs, and had this painted fastball and this paintish fastball, which led to this Justin Verlander reaction. Lucas Giolito had nine Ks in seven innings, giving up four earned runs, and got Ks on his fastball, changeup, and slider. And I love these Ks with that little K jump that he does. That is a fire follow through, Gio. Giolito also had this painted fastball, which shocked Otani. Speaking of shocking, Patrick Corbin had 9 Ks in 7 scoreless innings yesterday, thanks to his sliders and two-seamers. And those sliders looked really good. He outdueled Logan Gilbert, who had 4 Ks in 6 innings, giving up 4 runs, and had this splitter. Drew Smiley had 2 Ks in 3 and 2 thirds innings, but gave up 7 earned runs, and had these knuckle curves. And he battled Aaron Nola, who had 4 Ks in 5 innings, giving up 4 runs, and had this 95 mile an hour heater, this two seamer, and this knuckle curve. Dane Dunning was outstanding with 10 Ks in eight and two thirds innings and was one out from a complete game. He relied on his fastballs, including this painted two seamer, as well as his slider, and got a sword on a slider. 
and just had an outstanding game all around. He outdueled Joey Wentz, who had five Ks in four and two-thirds innings, but gave up four earned runs and had this fastball and curveball. Braxton Garrett, who had been on a roll with strikeouts, didn't get that many this game. He only had two in five innings, giving up only one run, and had this painted two-seamer. Blake Snell had 10 strikeouts in six innings, giving up only two earned runs, and relied mostly on his curveballs and changeups. Over his last seven starts, Blake Snell's ERA is .86, and he's now struck out 10 or more batters in four consecutive games. A heck of a roll for Snell. He faced Mitch Keller, who had five Ks in six innings, giving up only one run. Got a few calls with his fastballs. You can see these are just barely off the plate, but we'll take them. Also during this game, Jake Cronenworth did his best Darren Baker imitation, trying to get the bat as the runner was coming home. And I think everyone was a little confused at what the heck was happening. J.P. Sears had five Ks in four innings, giving up five earned runs, and had these fastballs and sweepers. And he was outdueled by yesterday's filthiest starting pitcher of the day, Domingo Herman. I mean, you have to win filthiest starting pitcher if you throw a perfect game, which he did. He became the first pitcher from the Dominican Republic to throw a perfect game, and the first to do it after allowing 10-plus runs in his previous start. The big difference in this game was his command. Herman threw an amazing 72 strikes out of 99 pitches, relying mostly on his curveballs and fastballs. In fact, he had 12 whiffs on his curveball and threw 51 curveballs this game to only 30 fastballs. And really nothing else stood out to me about his pitch movement other than the fact his command was pristine. Both his velo and his spin rates were basically exactly at his average for the season. He did a great job sequencing and tunneling, and you can see here in this overlay of his fastball and curveball why those pitches work so well together and why they're so tough to hit. They tunnel perfectly, and as a hitter, you're just left to guess. Of course, no perfect game happens without a great play, and here's a great diving play by Rizzo. Just a fantastic overall game by Domingo Herman. Now onto my filthiest relievers. Brian Abreu had this White Castle special. Rysel Iglesias had these filthy change-ups. Junior Marte had this 99-mile-an-hour diesel. Matt Strom had this fastball and slider combo. Ryan Presley had this dirty change-up and 3,300 RPM curveball. Jose Alvarado had his 99-mile-an-hour heater and 95-mile-an-hour cutter. Danny Coulomb had this disgusting back foot slider. Yanir Cano had this sick changeup. This is fantastic. Pete Fairbanks had this slider for a strike, despite the fact that he almost killed his catcher due to this cross-up. Great job by the umpire to keep his eye on the ball, because apparently nobody else was able to do it. Justin Lawrence had these wicked sweepers, and had this one that everybody whiffed on. Hunter Harvey had these heaters. That's some alliteration. Nick Pavetta had seven Ks in three and a third innings in relief, thanks to his curveball sweepers and sliders. Kirby Yates had these dirty splitters. Hayden Wesneski had this wicked sweeper that he got the backwards K on, and I thought this was a great combo to show why you would get a backwards K on a sweeper after you just threw a two-seamer well out of the zone. You can see in this overlay how that sweeper starts outside the two-seamer that ended up way out of the zone and then cuts back to the plate. So as a hitter, you're taking that pitch because you think it's just like that other pitch that was a ball, but instead, you're out of luck. Felix Bautista had this 101 mile an hour and 103 mile an hour pure diesel his appearance also featured this absolutely amazing bunt. Holy hand-eye coordination. How the heck did Senzel get his bat on this pitch? That's 102 miles an hour way out of the zone. Incredible. But my filthiest reliever of the day yesterday was Devin Williams. Williams had these airbenders that broke 23 inches, 22 inches, and an amazing 27 inches arm side. Yes, that is two feet and three inches worth of break on that last pitch. Talk about your UFOs. 
although it was more like a UDO, an unidentified diving object. And now, my pitching ninja moment of zen. Check out Andrew McCutcheon's face when they play David organ Schrein. music instead of his walk-up music. Fantastic. And we now have a new go-to reaction gif. What's up, everybody? My picks of the day today are a three-leg parlay. I'm going to start out with Taiwan Walker for 5Ks or more, then take Jesus Lazardo for 6Ks or more, and top it off with Shane Bieber for 6Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be? 